Spectrum News welcomes you inside the RP Funding Center in Lakeland for the final game of the 2019-20 girls high school basketball season here in the state of Florida. It is the Class 7A state championship, the largest class in Florida this year, with the Miami High Stingerees, 26 and 5, taking on the 30 and 1 Plant Panthers. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Lakeland. Austin Lyon, Travis Jones, our entire crew here ready for the final game of the high school basketball season for the girls' side. And here's a look at how each team advanced to tonight's championship game. Plant has been dominating opponents throughout the regular season, and they were able to defeat Palm Beach Lakes 73-64 in the semifinals. Miami High also with a victory here in the semifinals to set up the championship game. It's the third consecutive year that Miami High has played in the large classification final, and they have had heartbreaking finishes the last couple of years. We'll talk about that as the night goes along. This plant team appearing in their first ever championship game, or their second championship game, looking for their first title. And at the center of their success this year is 6'2 junior Kendall Cheeseman. You just watch warm-ups and you know what she's all about. Not only is she leading that team almost like a coach on the floor, but she's draining every shot in the pregame warm-up. Cheeseman Jr. who is committed to Vanderbilt and on the other side, Miami High led by Colleen Buckner, who will stay local for her collegiate career. She signed with UCF. And Colleen Buckner, now a senior, wants to kind of exercise some demons on the floor here at Lakeland and then get ready for just up the road at play, to play at UCF. And Buckner missed the potential game-winning layup at the buzzer in the final two years ago, 44-43 loss to Spruce Creek. Here are the Miami High starters, Jenny Scott and Daria Whitley, senior guards. They'll be at the center of everything that the Stingerees do tonight. Samaje Terry, a 6'2 senior, is a transfer from Miami Ferguson. Sam Bumgarten now in his 11th season as the Miami High coach. He's won 83% of his games since taking over a graduate of Miami High back in the early 90s. Likes to think of himself as the best defensive coach in the state, and the numbers back that up. They are outstanding on that side of the ball. Starters for Plant include Kayla Seeper, 6'2 senior who is coming off a career high, 23 points in the semifinal. Nyla Jean has over 1,000 in her career. She had 22 in the semifinals. And Honor Culpepper, an outstanding senior who's headed to NYU next season. She is a threat both as a scorer and a distributor. Carrie Mann in her 18th season as the plant head coach, native of the Bay Area, played volleyball, basketball, and softball at Plant City High School, returned to the Bay Area in 2002, swore she would never become a high school coach. Now she says you couldn't force her to leave. A tremendous job building this plant program, and the Panthers seeking their first ever state championship and what a way it would be to finish a season in which they've only lost one game what a way to end high school basketball here in the state of florida for the girls team you got plant somewhat local here in lakeland but you have also got miami high who always brings a great crowd for what is almost a yearly tradition for the girls team third consecutive large class final for miami high a year ago they lost to wakaiva 45 41 in two overtimes in the 9a championship game Two years ago, a one-point loss to Spruce Creek in which Colleen Buckner missed a potential game-winning shot at the buzzer, would have given Miami High the championship. And Sam Bumgarten told us earlier this week that not a day goes by when he doesn't think about that final possession. Not that he holds it against Buckner or thinks any less of her. He just replays that sequence in his mind at least once every day. And it's so unfortunate that you've strung together, you've, you've put together so many great seasons here uh, with Miami High, and you're exactly right. Coach Bob Garden haunted by that one image of that missed uh, layup that could have won them another state title. Had a three-point lead with under 15 seconds to go in last year's championship game. Gave up a three to Wakai, but ultimately tie it. Lost in double overtime. Coach Bob Garden with championships in 2014 and 2015. Well, perhaps the most impressive stat about Miami High. When they come up here, they get to the final. 8-0 in semifinal games. 
It is. It's, it's, so, it's something that you're almost looking forward to it. I think they booked the hotels a year in advance, and, and they know that they're coming to Lakeland. And like you said, they're staying for two nights. Tampa Plant, 109 and 10 the last four seasons. Just 10 losses in four years, but only one trip to the state tournament during that period, and it is this year. They lost in the region final last year to St. Cloud, 51-49. That left a bad taste in everyone's mouth. They were in control of that game, let it slip away, made a pact that night that they would come back here. And now after 30 wins, one more would get them to the ultimate prize. And Coach Mann knows that she's got something special with this team. She's got some senior leadership. She's got some underclassmen that have uh, put together quite a season. They just need one more cherry on the top. Miami High in blue, plant in white for the 7A championship game, final game in the state of Florida this season in Miami High. Controls the opening tip. Plant coming out man to man, pressuring the basketball somewhat. Fresh sophomore Janae Quinn handling for Miami High. Three seniors at the center of pretty much everything that the Stingerees do. And there's Colleen Buckner, who we profiled in the open, that scores on the opening possession. And Buckner on a mission her last game in high school before becoming a knight. Seeper out high, Cheeseman. A little bit long with the three, rebound to Jenny Scott. And you'll notice Cheeseman almost like a middle linebacker on this defense. She kind of is the quarterback of the defense, telling people where to be, where to go. Career leader in blocks and rebounds at Plant, and she is about 300 points away from becoming the all-time scoring leader. Great pressure on the ball from Nyla Jean, and it results in a turnover as Plant has the possession arrow. Nyla Jean just bullied the basketball there, just took it from her. Plant was a fun group to talk to in the press conferences after yesterday's semifinal. Very talkative, great group, and you get a sense that they are really together. The bond that this team shares, really unlike any other that I've seen this week. Nice seal inside. Layup wouldn't go for Farfante. Farfante Rebounded kept it by alive, though. Plant. And Culpepper unable to hit the three. Samaj Terry forwards the miss, and Farfante commits a foul. And Plant getting some open looks here early. I think those are shots that they are going to knock down once they get more acquainted with the gym here. Miami High's got to be careful. Miami High, one of the best defensive teams in the state. And Plant is the highest scoring team of any squad to make it here to the RP Funding Center. They average almost 68 points per game. Up top, Buckner. Aggressive drive. That shot altered by Cheeseman. And here comes Gene. Seeper off the back rim with that three. Boy, a couple of those shots have looked really good from Cheeseman and Seeper. That time, Cheeseman has it go in and out. Same thing. Every shot so far by Plant. In and out. Good looking touch. Those are going to fall. Much more of a guard-oriented team. You think about the history of Miami High here at the state tournament. Beatrice Mom Premier, of course, a 6'4 center who was an outstanding talent. McDonald's All-American. Shekinah Rachel, the last couple of years, was a bigger presence. This is a team that likes to shoot a lot of threes, unlike what we've seen from Miami High in the past. That effort a little long from Quinn, and Farfante tracks it down for Plant. Farfante kept that pivot foot down. Gene got inside. Again, shot does not fall. And both these teams kind of feeling each other out right now. Usually both teams more efficient than this offensively. Right on cue, though. Dario Whitley towing the three-point line. 0 for 5 from three-point range in last year's championship game. She hits her first attempt tonight, and it's 5-0 Stingerees. And Miami with that passive press, the 2-2-1. You're not going to get a lot of steals out of a press like that, but you do force the team to turn it over. Cheeseman breaks the seal with her 41st three-pointer of the year. And that's what I was witnessing in pregame warm-ups is I think I, seen, I saw her make 10 threes in a row from right around that area. 
perimeter shot is something that's improved a lot for Cheeseman in the last couple of years since she arrived at Plant. Coach Mann told us yesterday she once has made 42 in a row in practice. Buckner in the left corner, unable to answer. Whitley well positioned on the backside, fighting with Farfante, and it's out of bounds to Plant. Good job there by Farfante. Just kind of bodying up there. Didn't Kept her hands off her, kept her hands up in the air to show that it wasn't a foul. And here's the feet set, top of the key three. And like you said, finally broke the seal. Tanner Strickland has come on for Plant, five foot one inch freshman guard, daughter of former NBA point guard Rod Strickland. A player that has a lot of potential. Has two older brothers that are great basketball players and the belief of everyone in the family is that Tanner has the most talent of any of the children. And Tanner getting her first chance to handle it in the half court. She's been battling a nagging angle injury. And she got fouled on that drive. So a lot of dribble drive for Tampa Plant against this man-to-man. -man. I think Coach Mann telling them now that she wants something set up a little more structured. Jean spinning inside. And just about every shot for Plant right on the rim. Nice Ooh, hesitation <laughs> there, Jenny oh. Scott. Oh. <laughs> Cole Pepper finds Cheeseman. A few feet from behind the line that time, off the backboard, and here comes Scott. Buckner to the corner. Quinn, high arcing three, it is an air ball rebounded by Cole Pepper. And this is where you want to see your senior call pepper kind of settle the troops a little bit get something good bounce pass seeper kick out gene open three she's got it and nyla gene is fun to watch handles the basketball defends the basketball and there you see knock one down from three junior scored the thousandth point of her career in plants district championship win Underneath Buckner, got hacked by Cheeseman on the way up. Both of these teams largely unchallenged throughout the postseason as you get another look at Gene's three. Miami High won every playoff game by double digits. Plants margin of victory more than 40 points per game during the postseason. And that's what scares you late in a game. If you haven't been challenged in quite some time and all of a sudden you're down six with three minutes to go, uh, how you're going to respond to that. Plant got off to a bit of a slow start yesterday in the semifinals against Palm Beach Lakes, but then scored 26 in the second quarter. But a 17-point halftime lead, ultimately won by nine, but the game was never really in doubt. Buckner one of two. 8-6, Miami high by two. And here we see Nyla Jean in transition. Ill-advised pass there, but they fight and get it back. And there's that defense you're talking about with the Miami Stingerees. Just hands on everything. You don't have to get steals, just get deflections. Jean matched up with Whitley. This will be a fun matchup to watch as the night goes along. Cheeseman comes to get it at the free throw line. Nice head and shoulders fake on Buckner to get the easy layup. Classic move, you practice it all the time. You just catch, face up, rip through and go. Buckner in the corner, Whitley. Her three pops in and out. Nyer Lucas had a chance for a putback and then a backcourt foul committed by Whitley. And like I said before, Cheeseman underneath the basket there. She's kind of the orchestrator of that defense. Gets a big rebound there, holds on for the foul. 
One thing I've noticed early though, Miami offensively can relax against the zone. They can focus, relax, take, be patient, whereas Plant's having to work for everything. Strickland gets into the lane. Cheeseman comes to the ball. Strickland able to retrieve it and a reset for Plant. Seeper with the catch out beyond the three-point line. A deflection by Lucas and a steal. Here comes Kiara Cruz, sharpshooter off the Miami high bench. She had four threes in yesterday's semifinal win. Buckner down the lane, blocked by Cheeseman, but a foul, and that's going to be her second. And you've got to get her out, if nothing else, for 37 and a half seconds here to end this quarter. Good drive, good call. That is a foul. That's her second. But Coach Mann knows her better than I do. Uh, again, uh, just a junior, but the leader of this team, I'm sure, has played in foul trouble before. Yeah, I would get her out, yes. Culpepper comes in. Whitley also heads to the bench for what's likely to be a brief break. Now, if you're playing, you just need all hands on deck to break this press. Buckner missed both, but Miami High gets the rebound. Final half minute of the first quarter. Quinn hears the instructions from the bench to pull it out. Looks like they'll hold for one. You want this last shot of the quarter? Or Scott maybe not. Attacking on Strickland, muscles it up and in, plus the foul. <laughs> muscles it up is exactly right. There was nowhere to go. We look at Jenny Scott strong to the rim. Sam Bumgarten told us yesterday, Scott absolutely the most talented player on the team. She showed that in the first half of the semifinal win against Timber Creek. 13 points, five rebounds. Scott and Whitley both still unsigned seniors. Given the success of this program and their skills, a pretty big surprise. Gene pounded by Quinn and finally a whistle with 11 seconds to go. Pretty clean first quarter as far as fouls are concerned. Just seven total at this point. You've got all kinds of time if you're playing to attack the basket here. Don't settle for three. Gene with six, spinning on Quinn, forcing the issue out of bounds to Miami High. Bumgarten lobbying for an offensive foul call, got the turnover, and time expires. First quarter that was played at the pace Miami High would like. A suffocating defense from the Stingerees. Plant missing a lot of open looks. We are through one here at the RP Funding Center, 11-8, Miami High in front. Three-point lead for Miami High after one here at the RP Funding Center in Lakeland. It has been an arduous journey for Plant to get here to the RP Funding Center for the state finals. Mentioned just 10 losses in the last four years. A look at where their season has ended. Freedom in the district semifinals. Region semis against Winter Haven in 17 and 18. And then a crushing loss to St. Cloud 
a season ago in which they controlled most of the game, gave it away late. St. Cloud hit some big shots, made some big plays to ultimately win by two. And Kiara Cruz missing a three on the first possession of the second quarter. But you know from experience, it's not easy to get here regardless of how talented your team is. Even though you might be in a so-called easy region, and certainly plan hasn't been in that, the journey is, is long to be able to get here. And there's some times where it just becomes a mental block, too, that you're never going to get over that hump. You're never going to win that last game, what, what is actually the regional championship, to get here to the Final Four. So once you've done that, uh, that's what's uh, satisfying for the team, for the coach. And we hear from a lot of coaches that come here that that region championship game is often the most difficult one to win. It, it, it really is because a lot of times you're maybe on the other team's home floor in that regional championship. And uh, even if you are hosting that regional championship, there's a lot of pressure that goes along with that as well. So it's good to get to a neutral court and play in the final four. Buckner back in for Miami High. Three-point lead for the Stingerees. Farfante gets it into Culpepper. Nice cut, and she's able to finish. Nice underneath, out-of-bounds play. That's good coaching. And here comes the pressure by Nyla Jean. Fun to watch. Culpepper suffered a torn ACL in December of last season. And we figure if Plant has her, then they probably easily win the regional title against St. Cloud, given her presence. We'll overcome that injury and now back on the floor. Comes from an athletic family. Older brothers Rex and Judge, both college athletes. Father Brad was an NFL lineman, well-known figure in the Bay Area. And Culpepper, an exceptional young lady, have a chance to go play college basketball next year at NYU. Farfante down the lane. Buckner got a piece of it. Now in the post, going to work on Cruz. A foul committed by Nair Lucas. And here we see Sylvia Farfante, just a sophomore, but showing lots of moxie in this game. Gets her on her hip, maybe a hook, but she'll take the two shots. Injuries are really plagued plant the last couple of years. Farfante missed the entire month of January with a concussion. And for pretty much all of these girls basketball teams that come here, you, so these teams aren't playing 10, 11 players. It's seven, eight deep a lot of times. When you lose a starter, regardless of whether or not they're a major contributor in terms of scoring, that is a lot to replace. It, it really is. And like you said, if, if you're fortunate enough to be deep as a team, which is rare, especially in girls' high school basketball, to lose someone for the season, like you said, just really tough to overcome. Bucket by Jenny Scott. Takes the margin back to three. Gene lost the handle. Recovered by Cheeseman. Coach Baumgarten really lobbying for offensive fouls against the plant team. Culpepper to the corner, Farfante. Short with a three. Just a 19 for set three-point shooter. And that's a frustration shot because Tampa Plant wasn't getting anything. Their offense really not clicking. And even though there's not a shot clock, sometimes in high school players' minds, there, are, there is a shot clock. Well, Scott was a little out of control. Fortunate that the whistle came. Foul on Culpepper. That's her first and the team's fifth. Each team has committed five team fouls. Cheeseman is the only player in the game with two fouls, and she is out there with 528 to go in the first half. Five-second violation as Plant really dug in defensively. Good job by Tampa Plant. A lot of teams like to play zone underneath out of bounds, and they stuck to their guns there man-to-man -man and got the five-second call. And that guy's not real happy. And Sam Bumgarten wears his emotions on his sleeve. A lot like his mentors, Shaky Rodriguez, Frank Martin. Played for them at Miami High. Anthony Grant also part of that staff. Grant 
coaching a national championship contender this year at Dayton. Thought you'd never say that, huh? <laughs> Buckner. Nice move. Nice Strong jump take. stop. You don't see a jump stop like that too often anymore. Buckner's got five, and the lead is five. Uh, great position defensively. Buckner with the steal. Two on one. Drops it off to Cruz. Slight hesitation. Buckner got the rebound and a foul. We'll see who they call that on. I think they're going to say Culpepper, yeah. That'll be the second foul on Culpepper. So two on her and two on Cheeseman. I, I would like to see Buckner be more aggressive here and take this herself. It's the right play, but I think as a, a soon-to-be D1 college basketball player, that's her job to go to the basket there and finish it strong. Buckner's first free throw is good. So in yesterday's semifinal, Plant, or Miami High rather, went up against Timber Creek. Buckner, a UCF signee, was charged with guarding Savannah Henderson, talented sophomore for Timber Creek. That is the daughter of UCF coach, Katie Abrahamson Henderson. <laughs> That's a so great Coach story. Abe was watching her daughter go up against a future player, and Buckner got the better of that matchup with Miami High winning 57-44. She should have made a deal with her. Hey, you want to start next year as a freshman? <laughs> go easy on my daughter tonight, huh? <laughs> Well, Miami High, as is normally the case, played a challenging regular season schedule. And their losses came against teams that were either here in Lakeland or in the case of Ryle, still playing in the Kentucky High School playoffs. Lost to Lake Highland by 12, Palm Beach Lakes, which was here in the 7A semifinals. Miami Country Day, which was a six-time state champion until they got upset in the semifinals here, Montverde Academy not eligible for the FHSAA playoffs, but perhaps the best team in Central Florida. Five-point loss. Yeah, if you're going to have losses on your resume, those are the those are the type of losses you want to string together over a season. Stingerees once again won the Greater Miami Athletic Conference title, beating Norland in the championship game. Cheeseman finds Culpepper. In between two defenders, and Strickland lost the handle. Buckner, this time, will be aggressive. Missed the shot. Cheeseman boards it for Plant. And Quinn racing back defensively, tumbled over Strickland. So the second foul on Janae Quinn. And her dad is not going to like the fact that she got plucked from behind in that last possession. Now Strickland heads to the bench. They pay close attention to her minutes because of the ankle injury. She was in some pain at the end of yesterday's semifinal. And here's what I, I've said it before, but it's something to watch, is they have to work for every possession. They haven't gotten anything easy at any point in this game. Scott trying to create some contact with Gene. Now Cruz is certainly a threat in that corner. She had four threes in yesterday's semifinal win. Timber Creek did not do a good job of limiting her opportunities. Buckner facing up and driving, and that left-handed shot wouldn't go. And now if I'm... If I'm Cheeseman, I, I want to be more aggressive myself here. You're the captain. You're the leader of this team. You're deferring a little too much right now when your offense really needs you. Cheeseman's got it on the block against Buckner. Left-handed shot. No good. Not a lot of strength or position there to be able to go up. She heard me, but she's going to say, well, it's a lot easier said than done against this really good defense of Miami. Plant team that averages almost 68 points per game right now is sitting on 12. Jean with an impressive defensive effort to take it away. She dribbles into a three off the front rim, and again, it's one and done for Plant. The only people in the building that might be happy about this is, is the Plant ROTC. They do a, they'll do a push-up for every point they score. 
They had a lot of energy early in the game yesterday, even in that 26-point second quarter. They were easily handling the amount of push-ups required, but as it got to 73 late, <laughs> a couple of guys tapped out, and I, I no judgment, believe me, because I, I wouldn't be over there doing 73 late in the game either. Well, get the cameras ready. If, if this stays at 12 for Plant, I think I can do it. I think I can knock out 12 at halftime here. Any more, though, I'm not making any promises. A one and one for Gene after the loose ball foul. And even the free throws are challenging. Culpepper with a foul on the rebound, and that is her third. Strickland's got to come back. Hurt ankle or no, Culpepper's got to sit the rest of this half and then be careful to start the second half with three. Culpepper, a player who you can tell what she's thinking <laughs> just by looking at her. I always wondered as a, as a dad who played in the NFL as a lineman and a kind of a ticky-tack foul called on your daughter, how that, <laughs> how that affects you up in the stands. Brad, a lot of experience as a player, but a lot of experience as a father, given that his two older children, both sons, played high school and college football. Thirty-second timeout. Timeout for the Stings with two and a half to go in the second quarter, and Miami High has their largest lead at twenty to twelve. And they and Plan has been stuck on 12, what seems like forever. And give all the credit to Miami High. And here go the push ups. And they just knocked out 12. Or Very nicely done. Now that's neat. Well, Miami High has really made its reputation as a defensive team under Sam Bumgarten. Routinely, right around 30 points per game is what they allow, which is without question one of the best marks in the state. This year at 36.2, you see that 2018 team, 29 points per game. Given the schedule that they face year in and year out, yep. those are remarkable numbers. This year, only this year, giving up 36 a game has been a disappointment. He did admit yesterday uh, and, and had no problem saying, look, this is not one of my best defensive teams. <laughs> but if it's not one of your best and you're giving up 36 points a game, I'd say that's pretty good. Right. Nyla Jean's mid-range jumper doesn't go. Rebounded by Terry. And when your defense is that good, your offense really can be patient. You, you don't have to force anything. Just shoot a wide open three and knock it down. Daria Whitley with her second from the perimeter and it's a double digit lead, 23 to 12. Every pass is contested. Every dribble is hounded, and we're going to get a timeout. As we see that corner wide open, feet set, knocks it down. Plant has gone five and a half minutes without a field goal. It's been four and a half minutes since Sylvia Farfante made a couple of free throws to make it 13 to 12. And since that point, Miami on a 10-0 run. Yeah, it's, you, that's when you, as a fan, you start questioning the scorekeeper. Are you sure we still only have 12 points? But again, like I said, the Stingerees just are, are making it such a hard task to even get a pass made, to, to get a dribble anywhere towards the rim. And that, that starts wearing on you as well, psychologically, that, all right, when I do catch it, I've got to do something efficient with the ball. Nice crowd has come from the Tampa area to support Plant, as you'd expect. Great support from that community in South Tampa. As you watch Miami High's defense, it's, it's rare to see a girls' high school basketball team that plays quality pressure man-to-man -man defense. What is it they do that's most impressive? Yeah, it's the ball pressure. It starts there. Every great defense starts with ball pressure. And the way they pressure the basketball, it's hard to dribble. It's hard to see. And then every pass is contested. Passing lanes are contested. And what's unique is they don't have a shot blocker in the back. Normally, 
you've got a taller girl about 6'4 in the back that you can gamble, and she's going to just block anything that comes in there. And that's not the case. They've really got to lock down on defenders, and there we see it again. It's ball pressure. It's passing lanes. Buckner with the takeaway. She takes it the length of the floor and banks it in. Buckner now has 10 to lead all scorers. It's a 12-0 run. Cheeseman in the lane. Nothing falling right now for Plant. Buckner clears the glass with those elbows out wide. And, and that's a shot that Cheeseman could make in her sleep. But again, the pressure, uh, the, the thought that we have to score. We've been stuck on 12 for five minutes. That starts to wear on you, and you rush your shot. Buckner at the free throw line. Cruz left open. And she's got it. That lefty stroke, that high arcing three, nothing but the bottom of the net. Cruz, four of six from three-point range in the semifinals. As good a shooter as we've seen this week here in Lakeland. Kerrigan White into the game for Plant. Farfante unable to end the drought. And Miami High can hold for the final shot of the quarter trying to add to a 16-point lead. And if you're Tampa Plant, you cannot wait for halftime. You want to shoot at the other rim. Cruz There's something wrong with this one. has another one. Back-to-back -back threes. Plant unable to locate Kiara Cruz out of their zone. She hits back-to-back -back threes. Plant doesn't get a shot away as the half expires. And the Stingerees are in full control. They end the half by scoring the final 18 points. Plant held scoreless for six and a half minutes. And your message if you are Tampa Plant at halftime, Coach Mann, is third quarter. We win this third quarter no matter what. Yeah, you're down a bunch, but you write the score down 31 to 12, and you come out with the mindset of we just got to win the third quarter and then let it play out from there. Miami High in control at halftime of the 7A championship game. A 19-point advantage for the Stinger Reeves. Travis and I will step aside. We'll be back with stats and the start of the third quarter coming up.
halftime at the 7A championship game and a surprising score. Miami High on top of Plant, 31 to 12. A Panthers team that averages almost 68 points per game, limited to just 12 on four of 19 from the field in the first half. A phenomenal first 16 minutes for Miami High. Yeah, you said it, four of 19 from the field. Uh, about 21% is, is just unheard of. So Miami High, and that's something defense translates no matter where you play, whether it's at the, here in, in a big arena, a, a local high school gym, whether you're up or down at halftime, defense is something that's always going to be there for you. That's why it doesn't look too bright for Tampa Plant here in the second half. Now one of Sam Bumgarten's most popular sayings is that defense travels. Often tells his team, I might not be the best coach in the state, but I'm the best defensive coach in the state. I'm going to get your girls to play the right way. And he executed the game plan to perfection in that first half. Question is, what changes might we see from Plant to try to have more success? The only thing I can think of is maybe some full court pressure. You've got some guards that can defend and maybe pick it up full court and try to speed the game up a little bit. Um, try to get some easier baskets that way uh, off of steals. Because when it's a half court setting, uh, you're, you have not had a lot of luck. Miami High 3-4 and four in championship games. This is their eighth title game appearance, trying to win their fourth championship. And again, Plant in a title game for the very first time. And for some of the seniors on this roster, like Honor Culpepper and Kayla Sieper, want to make sure you make the most of these final 16 minutes. 73 in the semifinals yesterday and 12 in the first half. <laughs> Miami High with 18 consecutive points. It was 13-12 after a couple of free throws by Sylvia Farfante with six and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Since then, Plant has not scored. And deflected again, out of bounds. Deflection. Another deflection. I don't know if that's a stat uh, that Miami High takes or not, but they should because uh, that's a stat that leads to a lot of good defensive stops. Cheeseman picked up the dribble, needs somewhere to go with it. Barfonte flashes. Gene forcing the issue, unable to get it to go, and rebounded by Terry. And there's some full court pressure by Gene. A ticky tack call there against Kayla Seifer. That'll be her first foul. Plant's got a big crowd here, ready to erupt if they can go on some kind of run. And certainly given what this team has done during the course of the regular season, you know they're capable. They've got the offensive ability to be able to come back. And, and this is where I would maybe start taking some chances, maybe run and jump, uh, especially any kind of handoff. I would run and jump it and, and kind of speed this game up. Be a straight half-court man-to-man is not going to cut it. And Bumgarten likes the matchup of Jenny Scott one-on-one -on -one with Culpepper. Scott easily gets into the lane. Ball hung on the rim, would not go down. Farfante able to squeeze it and get it to Culpepper. Whitley draws Cheeseman on this possession. And there's just no room to breathe if you're Tampa playing. You look, it looked like they had some numbers there. Could maybe uh, force the issue, but, but Miami High is back in transition, and here we see another bog down defensively. Nice find. Cheeseman for Seeper. It drops and a chance for three. And that's a big play. Nice pass by Cheeseman. Seeper with the finish. Strong finish and one. And here's a chance, if you are going to press, make this free throw and set up your full court pressure. Seeper, career high 23 in the semifinals. That's her first basket tonight. And then able to pay off the three point play. Farfante with a rebound and she is fouled. And it's some individual effort like that. Some individual effort plays like this where you just kind of strong arm will to get back to that free throw line.
Chance to make it a four-point possession for Plant. Two free throws for Farfante. And like you said, this crowd wants to erupt, get a stop here and a score, and we might see that. First points for Plant in an entire quarter of action. Stops a run of 18 straight for Miami High. Quinn gets into the lane. That shot altered by Cheeseman. Culpepper in the middle of the floor. Free throw line jumper short. Farfante using her size inside against Whitley. Down to the floor, a jump ball. The arrow will give it back to Miami High. And the sophomore, Farfante, has really been the difference maker here in the third quarter. And Tampa Plant sticking with their half-court defense. Maybe they think that that full-court pressure is not going to be worth it. Scott, free throw line jumper, no good. Terry had the rebound. Gene slapped it away, and another jump ball will give the arrow back to Plant. So you've had a couple stops. It's just a matter of converting at the other end. Miami High jumps in to their 2-2-1 press. Deflection by Buckner out of bounds. It will stay with the Panthers. Farfante's having some issues with her nose. I don't, I don't think it's bleeding, but she keeps going back to it. She got whacked underneath the basket there. Gene probing for space off that screen, and Buckner in perfect help position, read her eyes all the way. Yeah, and I think playing throughout this season, in just a one-loss season, probably that pass uh, was completed most of the time, but, but Miami's just too good. Not just throughout the season, but here yesterday, that <laughs> pass was completed most of the game against Palm Beach Lakes. <laughs> Quinn just does break that closely guarded area for a five-second count. Buckner forcing the issue there, around and down. And Sam Bumgarten spends a timeout. Yeah, Sam Bumgarten is not happy with, with their offense right now. They're not doing a lot other than just dribble drive. The defense still solid as can be, but he's not real happy with his offense, you can tell. Here we see just off the dribble, actually really good defense by Plant. But unlike Plant, Miami High converting against some good defense. It truly is a family affair at Miami High. Sam Bumgarten's brother, Nicholas, the taller of the two men you see in the frame there. He handles the post players. Dad has been an assistant with the program dating back to the mid 80s. He is seated, seated on the end of the bench. Mom taught him about paperwork, fundraising, important parts of a high school program. She was actually listed as the head coach for a time while Sam essentially was running the team, but she was head coach in name only administratively. And that family has built a fantastic program. Eighth championship game appearance tonight for Miami High, back-to-back -back titles in 14 and 15, and to make it here three years in a row. I know some of the smaller classifications have had teams win consecutive championships, but for a public school that doesn't get an influx of transfers year after year, to continue to make the championship game is a phenomenal accomplishment. Yeah, just to, just to get out of South Florida alive and, and make it up here is, is notable. Uh, but to come up here and, and get to this state title game every time you come up is just remarkable. Farfante earns another trip to the free throw line. That's certainly been where she's most effective. Now five for five, shoots it at 83%. And she's been the spark here in the second half. Six points 
all of them at the line. Plant still without a field goal here in the third quarter, but they do have six points from the free throw line. And so they are going on more than 10 and a half minutes without a field goal. Buckner in the corner, Cruz. Long with the three. And here comes Gene. Weaving her way through a lot of traffic. Farfante forces it up, wouldn't go. Rebound tapped up and controlled by Terry. And let's look at the difference here in transition. Not much, Tampa, good job getting back. Transition defense, similar to what Miami High has done all night. It's just really stopped any momentum offensively. Gene trying to apply pressure, a hand check foul. First on Nyla Jean, it is the third on the team. Culpepper catches a break and she has not picked up that fourth foul yet, so that's a good thing for Plant. Now she sits and Strickland comes on. Now given the, the, the makeup of this plant team out there right now. You've got forwards in Farfante, Seeper, and Cheeseman. It makes it hard to apply a lot of pressure as Cruz is whistled for a travel. Yeah, maybe the bigger lineup works here because that's one of few turnovers for Miami High. Gene got a step on Cruz, dropped it off to Seeper. That's where she got a lot of her success in yesterday's semifinal, well positioned on the block, benefiting from dribble penetration. And, and that's something that Nyla Jean can do more of here to wrap up this third quarter, possibly into the fourth. And here we are, just a 13 point lead. Whitley lost the handle. Jean behind the back, nothing there in transition. Left handed drive wouldn't go. So many shots that Plant routinely makes not falling. And to the casual fan, they think, well, the, the Tampa Plains just having an off night. Well, there's a reason why <laughs> they're having an off night it, it is the pressure, the, the having to work for everything throughout this game. Up top, Scott, open three. She's got it. Another timeout for Miami High. Scott in double figures with 10. Stretches the margin back to 16 at 36-20. Stingerees in good position to win their fourth state championship in program history. And the only program with more, Miami Country Day, their run of six in a row ended this year by Masters Academy with that Fantastic semifinal game that went to overtime. Edison, Norland, certainly successful programs. Edison with Sylvia Fowles in the WNBA. Came up here, won a couple of titles. Miami Norland with Carla Harris Curry, fantastic coach. And Northwest Christian with a couple of championships as well. Sam Bumgarten really lobbying to get some more college attention for his two senior guards, Jenny Scott and Dario Whitley, both full qualifiers, he told us yesterday, and really amazed, dumbfounded, that they have not been signed yet by a college. And look, they're only 5'5 five, five and 5'7, five, but you're looking for program-type kids that value defense and understand how to play the game the right way. These yeah. two kids embody that. Unfortunately, what happens with a lot of high school kids is they get trapped in the summer circuit to where maybe they're on a team and they're placing an emphasis on being good defenders, which in a summer travel situation, <laughs> being a good defender uh, means absolutely nothing, uh, unfortunately. So that might be part of the reason. I don't think they're going to let Culpepper enter the game. I think the table's trying to signal the officials that she was there, and so she should be allowed to come in. It's not a big deal, guys. Just let her come in the game. There we go. <laughs> Bernadette Moore, Heather Marshall, and Stacy Macon making up this officiating crew. So 
Just more than two minutes to go in the third. Miami High, which has led virtually the entire game right now, up by 16. Body contact there from Doria Whitley. She'll pick up her second foul. And Nyla Jean continues to be the focal point of the offense as far as the ball is in her hands the majority of the time. And they're really depending on her to dribble, drive, and create for any offense. Cheeseman with the catch. Culpepper, a rare open look. It was short. Everything just a little bit faster. You sense as, as Cole Pepper caught it, didn't expect to be open and felt like she had to hoist it right away. <laughs> That's exactly what I've been talking about, too, is it wears on you mentally that if I do get an open look, I've got to let it fly. Some full court pressure from Plant. First time we've seen that. Buckner, nice one-handed pass up the floor. Cruz underneath Whitley. Didn't like what she saw, so she'll back it out. Good patience by Miami. When your defense is this good, you can afford to be patient. Well, Scott just cruised past Strickland. What a quick first step. Freshman commits a foul. Jenny Scott here, like you said, just cruised by, rip through and go. And back to the free throw line is Jenny Scott. You sensed from these players yesterday that sitting up there at that press conference, they were a confident group, especially these seniors. They did not want to let this opportunity go after what happened the last couple of years. Losing by four in double overtime in the championship game last year, lost by one against Spruce Creek in which they had a chance to win the game at the buzzer. Yeah, and sitting it, there in that press conference yesterday, they said, look, we're not we're not going back to Miami <laughs> empty handed. It's there's nothing as ugly as a silver medal, especially when your goal every year is to win a state title. And when you've won a couple of those silver medals back to back, it makes for a long summer, long fall. It, it's a, it's a grind to get back into that preseason conditioning uh, once school starts back up. And it, it's something that once you're back here now as seniors, it, you don't even want to think about uh, leaving as a senior and not winning a state title. You've been here so many times. It's a 17-point margin right now, but this large class traditionally always delivers drama. A look at the last five years. The largest margin of victory is nine. That came in a double overtime game between Vero Beach and Boca Raton. Four points of the margin last year, one the year before, three when Boca beat Ferguson in 2017. The other thing you see there, five different champions. The large class often has a lot more parity than any other classification. Yeah, and the way that the, the classifications have changed this year, still, the bigger classes are going to normally have that parity. One field goal for Plant here in the third. Other six points have come at the line. Stifling defense all night from Miami High. Cheeseman able to catch, but it was a challenge look at the rim. Yeah, Cheeseman, she, she is flustered. You can tell that this has not been anywhere near her best game. And she has struggled outside, inside, especially around the rim. Normal shots that she would make. Scott just outside the free throw line, sets up Cruz. Pepper on the backside, unable to track it down. Jean's got it. One-on-one -on -one with Scott. And Scott knocked it away. <laughs> and again, nothing easy. That's a, in transition like that, Nyla Jean, probably nine times out of ten this season, has gotten to the rim and finished it. But instead, with Miami High, everything's contested. Buckner will sit. Samaj Terry back in. Can Plant get a bucket, maybe steal one here at the end of the third quarter? Gene in close. Out of bounds. It stays with the Panthers with 32.1. 
Strickland setting up Seeper in and out. And a rebound to the Stinger Reese. Strickland takes it back. And a foul committed by Miami High. So for the first time, I think this entire game, we've seen numerous possessions uh, at Plants Basket. Cheeseman calling for it. That's a tough shot. Fading away from about 10 feet with Lucas right in her face. Gene read it perfectly, and for the first time tonight, it's an uncontested bucket for Plants. And that's Nyla Jean. She's the key to keeping this somewhat close here, and she's going to be the key to any offense here in the fourth quarter. Culpepper got it back but couldn't get a shot away before the buzzer. Well, Travis said that Plant had to win the third quarter. They did do that, but only by four points. So it's a 15-point game. Miami High remains in control with eight minutes to go here in Lakeland. to the fourth here at the RP Funding Center in Lakeland. Austin Lyon, Travis Jones, our entire Spectrum News crew on hand for the first week of the FHSA Basketball Championships. Second quarter stands out 20 to four in favor of Miami High. And Carrie Mann's team needing to put together a big rally to have any chance here in the fourth. Fewest points scored by Plant this season is 41. That came in their only loss, 54-41 to Fayetteville High from Arkansas. I thought Jenny Scott from Miami did not have a great end to that third quarter. A couple turnovers late. Uh, uncharacteristic for Miami is to kind of put their take their foot off the gas here. I don't think they'll do it though. Missed three by Strickland. A tie up for the rebound and the possession arrow back to Miami High. And this is one of the harder things to do, especially with high school kids, is to put somebody away. You've been winning the whole game, you're up pretty big, but now playing really nothing to lose here with eight, seven, seven and a half to play. Culpepper a deflection up ahead to Gene. There's some contact, but no whistle. And out of bounds to Miami. Plant just seven for 34 from the field. Long pass up the floor, Buckner. That spins out. Those are the types of breaks Plant needs to have any hopes for a comeback. Culpepper, that shot rejected by Buckner. Cheeseman there, and she'll be on the line. And this is what exactly what you need if your plan is to get to that free throw line, score points, clock stopped. And, and that's a senior there, Culpepper, a senior who is knows that she's got about seven minutes left in her high school career, and she's going to let it all hang out. Cheeseman's first free throw up and good. Averaged. 10 points per game as a freshman, 13 and a half as a sophomore, continuing to raise that this year, up above 16. Splits the pair. Full court press off a miss, not easy to do. Scott gets a round call, Pepper. The speed and ball handling ability of these Miami high guards makes it difficult to trap. Nice crossover by Quinn. Right on cue. Yeah, and that's the other thing I was talking about earlier about putting a team away. 
is when you're on offense, sometimes the thoughts are, even as a coach, is to, okay, we want to just end this game. We've got the lead. We've had the lead. We just want the clock to run out so we can celebrate. Whereas you, you want to go ahead and just go win the game. Buckner, friendly roll on the first free throw. 13 points in last year's state championship game and 13 points tonight for Colleen Buckner, right on her season average. Anxious to see her as a UCF Knight next year. UCF and Coach Katie Abrahamson Henderson with a big win on the road today against Memphis. They're looking like probably going to be an NCAA tournament at large team. Buckner with a rejection. Taken right back by Plant. Gene had the deflection. And now numbers for the Panthers. Gene right into Buckner. That's a block, and it'll count. And Nyla Gene continues to be that spark. Finally, some transition points starting to rack up for Tampa. And that is a strong take and one. Get the sense that Plant has one push, one more push. Just don't know if it'll be enough. A couple of missed free throws, one by Cheeseman, one by Gene. A trap forces a turnover. Strickland kicks to Cheeseman, that's a three. Big shot, Kendall Cheeseman, and it's down to 11. As close as Plant has been in a long time, and Jenny Scott with the answer for the Stings. <laughs> and Jenny Scott did two things in that possession. First, she calmed everybody down, didn't force anything, and then just created her own shot to score. And then boxes out at this end. Spins out on Gene. There's that run and jump I was talking about earlier. Make them scramble. Make them uncomfortable. Buckner presents herself in the middle of the floor. Farfante with a lot of body contact. That's only, the fifth team foul on Plant. Yeah, only their fifth foul. They can continue to be aggressive. You don't mind being in the bonus now. Miami High has been so solid all game. If you're Plant, you just want to try to create some doubt in their mind. And given what's happened here the last couple of years, a lot of bad memories for them to potentially draw on if the game gets a little bit closer. But right now, <laughs> not much game pressure. <laughs> right. I, I think if there's a way you can get it down into single digits, that would help. Just a phenomenal performance so far for the Stingerees. Miami held Timber Creek scoreless for more than four minutes after the Wolves got close in the fourth quarter yesterday, and they held Plant without a field goal for more than a quarter here today. Farfante up on Buckner. There is the whistle. That's the seventh team foul, so it'll be a one and one for Colleen Buckner. So now this is really uh, Tampa Plant's best shot at coming back here is, is simply missed free throws by Miami High. If, if they can continue to foul. Buckner leads all scorers with 14. And tacks on another. And we talked about Buckner at the start of the broadcast as far as maybe exercising some demons here on this floor. And, and this is one way to do it is from the free throw line. She's going to handle the ball a lot, probably get fouled a lot down the stretch. One of two. Kerrigan White the rebound. Yeah. 
Still just nine made field goals in the game for Plant. Three-pointer off the back rim. Two defenders around Cheeseman. Gene just outside the lane. Missed shot, rebound, Cruz. And a foul will put Kiara Cruz at the line. She's got blood, too. I think she just got scratched on that foul. They might have to patch her up real quick. This is where you have your designated best free throw shooter on the bench ready to come in. We need you, Jenny. The training staff quickly going to work on Cruz. There we go. Simple enough. You know someone who's a really good shooter doesn't want to miss a chance at the line, <laughs> right? Exactly. Now, if she wasn't, then you might have had to nurse that. You might have had to milk that injury a little bit. Well, you're going over there telling the medical staff, hey, look, this looks a lot worse. We need to we need to keep her out. I, I, want, I want you guys to do a full evaluation here. It's like in Step Brothers when the bunk beds collapse. <laughs> There's so much blood. Cruz, 15 points in the semifinals, four threes. Couple of threes tonight, and she's got eight points. Knocks down both free throws. And if, ooh, thought she traveled first. They'll yep. get Cruz for the foul. Miami has committed seven team fouls, now eight, so it'll be a one and one for Nyla Jean. And and Plant's got to be careful here because if this trend continues, it's going to be up to 20 before they know it, and, and then it is over. Tough night for Nyla Jean. 3 of 15 from the floor after she was 10 of 15 in the semifinals. 22 points, 7 assists, 6 rebounds, and 6 steals. Had a season-high points in the semifinal. Coach Mann letting them know that make or miss here full court pressure. Steps up and hits both. 44-30. Quinn up the far sideline. Scott two on one and Cruz with a little ball fake and a lefty layup. And that's the problem with a team that normally doesn't press, a team that hasn't had uh, that many close games this year, not having to press much, that your press really isn't that efficient, isn't that effective. Cole Pepper short on the three. And as we come up on four minutes to go, looking more and more like a coronation for Miami High here in the fourth quarter. Buckner, face up and go, strong take. Seeper stays with it after the miss. Kerrigan White with the runner. And the shooting struggles continue for Plant. The Panthers 9 for 44 from the field. That is right at 20%. And Miami High getting all kinds of shots right at the rim. And, and here's that 20 point margin with three minutes to play. You can, uh, if you're a Miami High fan, you can go out in the lobby and start buying some T-shirts. Cheeseman knocks down a three. Terry Mann gets a timeout. Well, we have come to expect this Miami High team to be outstanding defensively when they come to Lakeland. And even though Sam Bumgarten told us this is not one of his best defensive teams, I think when he puts on the tape, he's gonna be awfully proud of this effort. Yeah, I, I, don't, I think that uh, maybe Plant's gonna do a lot better down the stretch here and, and maybe go over that 36 that they're averaging giving up. Uh, but again, I, I don't think that's gonna matter much <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. 
You've got similar experiences to some of the players from Miami High, the, the gut-wrenching losses here the last couple of years. As a coach who was here and had a couple of gut-wrenching losses, how difficult is that and how much motivation does it provide for your kids? Well, the main thing is just keeping them all together. Uh, we lost to Dwyer by a point. And, and in 2003, and most of my core team was, were juniors, and it was just a matter of keeping them all at the school at that point, keeping them all on the same page for an entire year was pretty difficult. My best player uh, was tempted to go, oh, jeez. Collision between Strickland and Scott. Scott's tough. This is a boom. That was a draw there. <laughs> yeah, but at one point, my best player was going to go to Oak Hill Academy, and uh, the guys weren't getting as long, getting along as much as well as seniors as they were as juniors. So, as a coach, it's really tough to keep a group of teenagers together for a number of years like that, with keeping their eyes on the on one prize. But we were very fortunate that everyone stayed. Everyone stayed healthy. And we were able to go back in 2004 and win the state title. Wow, that was a long time ago, huh? <laughs> Getting old, man. Yeah, you're older than me, so you're pretty <laughs> old. <laughs> Scott hits the first of two after that violent collision with Strickland. Now you famously did a, a lap around the entire court after winning that state title. I wonder what <laughs> players like Scott and Whitley will do or what Sam Bumgarten will do. I, I don't predict he's the type to take a lap, but you never know. Scott perfectly reading that. Farfante spun back into a turnover, and Scott laid it in. Mm. Cross-court pass intercepted by Buckner. Gene with the deflection. Miami High still got it. Quinn feeling it a little bit with that jumper. Cruz commits a loose ball foul that will allow Strickland to have a chance at the line. And if you're Tampa playing, you're, thank, you're very thankful that there was a foul call to just kind of stop the flow here. Catch your breath a little bit and try to – it doesn't seem like much, but, again, you, don't, you never want to lose by 20. For some reason, that mark is – a little excessive. You want to try to keep this lead below 20 if you're Tampa player. Cheeseman a rebound and a putback. Ooh, it's a travel. I, I was with you. I thought Scott got away with an extra step, ran into Farfante. That'll be the fifth foul on Silvia Farfante. So the sophomore fouls out. Are you and I both impressed with her tenacity, desire, making things happen on the offensive end tonight. I think Coach Mann's trying to get a tech. <laughs> Come on, Coach. Don't end the season on a tech. Good officiating there. That is outstanding officiating. She's going to let her, let her vent. She's frustrated. Good officiating. I wish I'd have had more officials like that when I was coaching. Listen to me vent, not team me up. Uh, it's a warning, good. Get her back in her box, because the officials are being evaluated too. And so they can't let her continue to do this either. That is outstanding officiating. I would say Carrie Mann is venting in a way that's a little bit more controlled than you used to. <laughs> I resemble that remark. It's every part of the rim and drops in for Jenny Scott. Seventeen in the game for Jenny Scott. Billy Wynn. Checks in for Miami. Seeper back in for the Panthers. You can tell the excitement's building on that Miami high bench. They know they're just a couple minutes away 
from what will be a huge celebration. Quinn called for the foul. And neither team just wants to, just wants to quit here down the stretch either. So we're gonna I think we're gonna see a lot of this, a lot of fouls, a lot of free throws. Plant still six points off their season low. Scored 41 and a loss to Fayetteville, Arkansas, 54-41, their only loss of the year. And they may or may not get to that number. One of two for Gene. Whitley breaks the press herself. Wynn lays it in. Billy Wynn will remember scoring a basket in the state championship game. This is one of the neat things about the state final. You don't want to see a blowout in the state championship game, but you do get to see some kids come off the bench that normally would not get in and play in a state title game. And we're back to the free throw line. Whitley continuing to battle inside there against Cheeseman. Dario Whitley 5'7", Kendall Cheeseman 6'2". But don't let anyone tell you that Whitley shouldn't be in there mixing it up for rebounds. The carry man couldn't say enough good things about Kendall Cheeseman in our conversation yesterday. I don't think I've heard a coach say a lot of things <laughs> here in Lakeland during the course of 20 years. And Coach Mann told me something I never heard yesterday. He said Cheeseman is the best human <laughs> she's ever met and said she's a lot more mature than she is. <laughs> Giselle Wilson on the floor for Miami High. The foul will put Jenny Scott back at the line. So when you think about the future for Plant, Honor Call Pepper, Kayla Seeper, two really valuable seniors that combine to average 20 points per game and bring a tremendous amount of leadership. But with Cheeseman, Strickland, Gene, and Farfante, there's a really nice core. As you said, if Plant can keep those four together <laughs> going forward for next year. Yeah, and it's it's not like Miami High where you, you've been here numerous times. You've lost the heartbreakers here. This is uh, the fir their first time here. They're going to get blown out. So these girls should stay hungry. It, it's still very easy to motivate them. Carrie going to wipe back in. She's another senior. Jeans three in and out. Scott with the rebound. I thought we might have a, a clean possession there and a dribble up the floor without a foul, but that's not the case. Starting to wonder how many possessions we can squeeze into this last minute. I haven't wished you happy leap day yet, buddy. It's February 29th. Yep. We don't see it too often. As you told me earlier, roughly once every four years. Yeah, exactly. Free throw good for Jenny Scott. She's up to 22 points on 11 of 12 at the line. All right, we're not going to have a foul this possession. I can feel it. Gene, that spins around and out. And jump ball. Arrow will keep it with Plant. Daria Whitley going to come back in for Miami High. Sam Bumgarten will actually take a timeout. And here, we're, if you're Coach Baumgartner, you just tell your girls to be strong with the basketball offensively. Defensively, we're not quitting, we're not giving up, but we don't want a foul. We don't want this clock to stop message specifically for his three seniors, Scott, Whitley, and Buckner. And while Plant's got a lot of talented young players and a core that positions them to be back here next year, look at this Miami high roster. Scott, Whitley, Buckner, Terry, four starters that are seniors. And Sam Bumgarten said as much yesterday, like, we, we better win it this year because I'm not sure we're going to be back here next year. 
Uh, now he's got an opportunity to do what I wish I would have done is just retire at the podium after the state title game, win it all, announce your retirement after you get in the medal. Thank you, coaches. An anonymous <laughs> fan doesn't want to be recognized. But obviously, if you're thanking coaches, you definitely don't want anyone to see who you are. Kayla Seeper steps out free off the back rim, and that's just been that kind of night. I mean, even, even the shots that looked good were in and out, around and out, off the front rim, off the back rim. Plant for the game, 11 of 50. And it's rare when you come to the Lakeland Center here to win it your first time. You, it's almost like it's a rite of passage. You've got to come here and lose at least once. It's rare to come here one time and win a state championship. And I think part of that is what Plant is going through right now as well. Cheeseman fouls Buckner. So walk to the other end. 48.4 to go on a 23-point margin. And the state think, title game is unique, too. Plant really had a lot of time to prepare for Palm Beach Lakes, uh, who they defeated in the semifinals. You don't have a lot of time to prepare for the state championship game. And, and sometimes you're doing walkthroughs in hotel lobbies. Jenny Scott checks out. Big hug from Sam Bumgarten. Her Miami High career is over. I think we're going to get the seniors out one at a time, maybe. If Buckner wants to stay in, she can miss this free throw. Yeah. She knocks it down. And redemption for Colleen Buckner. Ah, oh, love it. Overcome with emotion. What a moment. Yeah, I, I teach teenagers, and, and it's a tough demographic. And, and to see kids that emotional is really something special. Buckner, who had a chance to win the state championship two years ago, missed a good look at the buzzer that would have won it against Spruce Creek. She was incredible tonight, and we'll get the chance to know what it feels like to have a gold medal around her neck. Daria Whitley will get the curtain call. And we would hope for no fouls here. Just let this game end. Quinn will bring it up, the only starter that's an underclassman. And a lot more will be counted on from her next year. Miami High will dribble out the final 10 seconds. The Stingerees hold the Panthers to their lowest point total of the season. Just 38 for a team that averages more than 67. And the celebration is underway for Miami High. Stories of redemption are often the best, whether it's in sports or in life. And this Miami High team, which lost the last two state championships, one in double overtime, one by a single point, got redemption in a big way tonight with their core of players that have led them here the last three years, getting to celebrate and go out as champions. Give Plant all the credit. They ran into a buzzsaw here tonight. But you said it best, redemption for Miami High, the Stingerees, another state title in that gym. I don't know how much more, how much more room their gym has for banners. Fourth state championship for Miami High, first since they went back to back in 2014 and 2015. It'll be silver medals for the ladies from Tampa Plant, their first ever championship game appearance. And unfortunately, they will go back to Tampa knowing that they did not play their best tonight. Yeah, the good news is it's a short trip you know, for Tampa Plant. The bad news is, like you said, it, it's, a, it's a tough one. It, it, you won't get over it tonight. You won't get over it this weekend. Uh, but back to school on Monday, and you, you, you keep working for the future of a very young team. 
a mature group of kids. Not surprising to see Kendall Cheeseman delivering a message to that huddle at the end of last year's regional final loss to St. Cloud before they got here. They made a pact that they would be here in Lakeland next season. They fulfilled that and perhaps making a similar pact that they'll be back in this championship game a year from now. You see the, the, the senior honor Cole Pepper kind of in a zone right there, though. She's, she's, uh, she's got a future as well. You said at NYU, so the uh, future was very bright for her as well, but this was her last high school game. We will stay with you for the medal and trophy presentation. So you want to see these girls get presented with their medals and the team get their championship trophy. Miami High program all about family. Sam Bumgarten with brother, father. Such a huge part of this program. Son there in the middle. It'll be a fun ride back to Miami-Dade County for the Stingerees. And they were dominant from start to finish. 63-38 the final. That wraps up our coverage of the FHSAA Girls Basketball Championships. A fantastic week here in Lakeland. We'll be right back at it next Friday and Saturday with all seven championship games in the boys' basketball finals. Until then, for Travis Jones and our entire hardworking crew here in Lakeland, led by producer Chris McCulley and director Zach Forrestal, some shine for the production guys. We always like to do that. They do a fantastic job. Austin Lyons saying so long from the RP Funding Center in Lakeland. Congratulations to the Miami High Stingerees. They are the 7A state champs.